What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we're doing the mountaintops of the Giants Guide. Not exactly the largest area, but there's more than a few things to cover in this one. But we'll be starting over here at the Zamor Runes. And, like I said before, there's more than a few things that we need to cover, so let's get straight into it. Now, just to the left of this Lost Grace, we're going to have a guy that we can talk to that essentially gives us some information on possibly a way we can alter the ending of the game or possibly change up the main quest line, take some different actions. I'll let you uh, talk to him and gather your own insights off of that. Don't want to spoil anything, but that's what it seemed like to me. But from that point, we'll head to the ruins over to our right. There's going to be a specific enemy type over here that's going to be very frustrating. I'd honestly say just don't even bother trying to fight them. It's not worth the runes. It's not worth the headache in general. They've got a very long range, wide radius, uh, like frost breath attack. They've got the ability to do a frost push outward in a 360 radius. Not easy to stagger these enemy types, even with the summons with you. It can be very frustrating to deal with these guys, especially in the amount of numbers that you could be facing in this one spot. So I'd honestly say, get on your horseback, kind of move through here as quick as possible. I just kind of left it in here just to showcase what these enemies can do. But over here on our right inside this middle rune, we'll have another one of those spells popping up. I believe I did die over here to these two. Actually, I think there's three of them. Yeah, it's it gets to be uh, uh, whew, a giant mess. I mean, obviously you can take them down, but it, it is extremely frustrating. But just over to the right of them is going to be one of those... Uh, smaller dungeons just going to have a chest in here that will be able to get out one of those bell bearings then we'll be able to push out to the right i believe i faced off against with uh or against that enemy type again and it's it still didn't even go good just going against one of them it's just extremely aggro very irritating not easy to stagger they've got that long range ability anytime you get close they're either slicing and dicing you with a weapon or just pushing with that frost push or force push whatever you want to call it yeah i mean look at the range on that unreal uh, i just i hate this enemy type and i'm glad you really don't see too many of these past this point i can't remember another moment but if this is something that's going to be common later on uh, whew, you know knights can take a, a back seat compared to this thing but after i die to this one you know we just push over to the right there's going to be one more thing to grab and then we're out of here we're booking it we're done with these. Now over on our left, up on top of a tree, you're going to need a some type of ranged attack for this. Drop down this scarab. Lucky enough, this one doesn't immediately bolt away, but we'll get a somber smithing stone out of that. Now just over to our right is going to be another one of those statues that essentially just points us in the direction of a dungeon. We'll be coming up on that shortly. It's kind of a winding maze dungeon in a way. Not exactly the uh, biggest maze, but it's got a little bit more... Uh, depth to it than you possibly may have seen the first time going through if you weren't looking uh, or trying out different lifts essentially but from this point we'll head over to our left I believe there'll be a good bit of crafting material over here if you just want to keep picking those up as you're moving on by but down here there's going to be a bigger boy enemy one that's got a little bit of blood loss and some fire damage to it can be very frustrating we we'll also have a new ability over here on the right next to this tree believe that's another one of those blood loss abilities, but this guy's going to have a, a blood whip, essentially. Kind of wish we uh, got this blood whip. I, I'd really want to have that one, actually. That'd be a fun one to play around with, at least. But he'll start spitting out some fireballs from the top of his head. You know, he's he's ready to showboat at some TGI Fridays. That's for sure. That's a birthday right there you don't want to have. But after you're done uh, dealing with this constant whip attack, it is very frustrating. You you just won't get anything out of him. I really would have thought we would have gotten the whip or something along those lines. But over to our right, we're finally going to be inside of that dungeon. Grab up that Lost Grace and start heading down in. Now there's going to be more than a few of those gargoyles, so do be aware of that. It can be very frustrating. And you'll notice there's more than a few of uh, those gargoyle cat statues in here. That's going to be... Uh, an issue going forward, and it's going to be more than one of them. But we'll grab up that uh, glow board, start heading deeper in. I appreciate it, yippee. But once we get to the lift, we'll be able to head down. Now, once we get down here, you want to activate the lift <clears throat> once more as soon as we get here. 
You'll notice once it comes back up, we'll actually have another platform that we can stand on to go down later on. We won't go down it just yet. There's going to be the boss room that we'll need to unlock as we push forward. Now, just up ahead, there's going to be some, uh, some of those gargoyle characters or imps just throwing some type of magical bomb at you. So watch out for that. If they both hit you at the same time, it can be some devastating damage. But from that point, we'll take another lift down. Now, we'll be able to raise this lift and uh, jump down that a little bit later on. But from that point, we'll start heading forward. Few pots in this uh, area down here. And one of those bigger pots as well, so be aware of that in the next room coming up. I believe he'll drop down from, yeah, there he goes, right there on the right. But you should be able to make quick work of him. Now, I'm not sure if somebody was trolling me, but there was a writing in front of that statue that said to gesture to it. I keep doing it every time, but apparently either I don't have the right gesture for it, or, you know, it's just another troll moment. But in this next room, we're going to have some exploding pots. Be ready from these. They're a bit comical, but still deadly. It, as you'll notice, they'll be chasing you all the way down the hall. Now, you can hit these guys until they're dead, and then they'll explode in place. So essentially just chop them up until uh, you finally got that health bar down and then roll away. Best way to deal with it. You'll notice I kind of perfect it right there, but you know the first few times you take a little bit of flack. Nothing going to be in this room, but we'll keep on heading forward. Yeah, there's going to be some of those, uh, you know, I don't even know what to call these things, just uh, gassy eggs. I mean, deviled eggs immediately comes to mind because they're uh, clearly spitting out some stink. But we'll take those out fairly quickly and then move on to the next area. Going to be a couple more pots in here now. There'll be an open uh, doorway on our left. We'll take down the bigger pot. I believe we'll get a cracked pot over here on the left. Or it could be a ritual pun. I can't read it from right here. But we'll take this down. We'll actually be in a completely different area at this point. We're not circling back to the same spot they were before. So we're going to have to uh, move through here like we did the previous section. Now there'll be some exploding pots, so be aware of that. They're chaotic. It's, it's kind of funny looking, but at the same time can be detrimental. Now once we open this up, we'll be able to drop down right here. Now, from this point, this is where we first came in, so we'll need to double back to the same location. Probably should have. Well, in my gameplay footage, I dropped down immediately thinking, you know, we were still on the main floor. Thought we were going back through the same area that we were before, but essentially that was incorrect. So we'll need to double back, head back down that wall. After we skip past everything, luckily enough... We've cleared it all out, so we don't have anything to worry about when it comes to moving back on through. But we'll drop down that uh, side wall again, back into that new area, and we'll start exploring this. Now, for whatever reason, my green screen started popping up out of nowhere. I guess it was the sunlight reflecting on it, but we also have a couple more of those uh, exploding pot Ugh. pots to deal with, so be aware of that. There's going to be more than a few now, after I've checked every single wall, making sure there's no illusionary walls, uh, you know, we'll head back on track. Now, do watch out for those traps, even though they're not the most deadly, you know, who knows how many health bots you've used by this point. We'll make our way on through. It's going to be in another couple of those uh, sporadic little exploding pots. I do love how they uh, throw their hands up like we. It's funny. But we've got a couple more of those explosive pots and another bigger pot down here. Make quick work of him, and we'll have another glow board after that. Do be sure to grab up the crafting material off of each one of them. Another one of those moments where they say you need a jester. I mean, I tell you right now, I've jestered more than a few times to these things, and uh, still haven't gotten one to activate. Kind of frustrating. Now, this may seem like the same room, but you'll notice here in a second, there are some... Big differences coming around this corner. We'll let it be a surprise for a moment. And there's that bigger boy. Oh, man. I thought this thing was going to be a bit more deadly, but uh, it is quite easy to deal with. He's just got a bigger gas cloud to spit out. But not too bad. You kind of just knock him over pretty easily. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. But straight in front of us is going to be another one of those bigger boy uh, pots. And I believe there's another glow board back here. Yes, yeah, so we're on the left. 
Then we'll be able to drop down again. Now, essentially, we're just going to be dropping all the way down. It's going to be nowhere else to go from there, but we'll be able to go back and drop down. Uh, or first, we've got to take the lift up. I completely forgot about this. Since we're in that new area now, I believe the cat gargoyle is going to be up here. I hate these things. They're very irritating. They don't stagger all that easy. Yeah, they've got a, you know, they, they just constantly float in the air. So for me, as a greatsword user melee, it's a bit harder to hit them in certain moments. And I'll tell you what, once he starts chopping away, I'm the one getting staggered by that point. But we'll grab up the globe ward. You could honestly just run straight by him. Trust me, he's only going to give you runes. There's nothing special from killing him. It's almost not even worth the time or aggro. And, well, you know, if he kills you, you, you might as well go back for some revenge. And we make pretty quick work of him. Uh, I was sick of this guy by this point. Just get rid of him. But still irritating and still taking a lot of damage from him. From this point, after we double back, we're going to have a couple of more of those smaller gargoyles to deal with. Do make quick work of them, because that blood loss ability they have on their blades, is, it's devastating. But we'll take the lift back up, go straight back down, and there's going to be nothing beneath that lift, actually. Completely forgot about that. But now we'll be able to head back to that lift that we set up for ourselves earlier on. Take that on down. You're going to notice there's, a, there's another one of those cat gargoyles, but this time he's a bit different. He's got a bit of a frost ability to him. So you're going to need to watch out for this guy. He's a bit more magical. A bit more sporadic. It's, uh, I mean, to say the least, very irritating to deal with these guys. Lucky enough, we can make quick work of them, but we'll have another globe wart back there on the left. Now from this point, we'll head down in here and there's going to be a, a frost hurt in front of us. You definitely want to make sure that uh, you time this one properly because it, it does deal quite a bit of damage. There will be a gargoyle popping out from the right, two of them. And then we'll grab up another one of those glow boards. Now, once we push in towards this, uh, actually there's another trap right there. Do hit that turret and it will bring it down. Don't, uh, you know, don't get stuck between both of these turrets like I did because I completely forgot that you could hit the turret and drop it down so that it doesn't fire. But over on our right is going to have that illusionary wall that we can break into. And then we can hit that other turret. But inside here is going to be a triple cat-faced gargoyle that spits out some frost damage. You do not want to be in front of it if it starts spitting frost. It is an instant kill, trust me. Very frustrating. You want to aggro it as quick as possible. You want to get up straight in its face. Make sure that it starts slamming down. But from this chest, we'll be able to grab up another one of those uh, summons. Can't remember exactly which one it was. Now, there was another moment where people were trying to tell me to gesture to this thing, and I could not get it open. Didn't have the right gesture, or I believe it may actually just be a dead end, but you'll notice that moment where I facepalmed myself, completely forgot that we could hit the turret and drop it down. But Lucky enough, I'm able to tell you that before we... Uh, well, before you possibly pushed in here. Now from that point, we'll be able to head back up and head back into that boss room. Now obviously, we'll have to make sure that we activate the lift again, wait for it to drop down, and go straight back up again. Now you may have noticed a little spot that you could walk onto, trust me. There's no illusionary walls back there. It's not, a, it's not worth jumping off right there. I thought it was... But that's why I skipped it completely if you uh, were thinking, oh, there was a spot you could have jumped off on that lift for. But from that point, you know, we'll head back. Well, I, I ran back to the Lost Grays just to get some uh, health pots back before we ran into this boss. But it's going to be another one of those Slither bosses. Now, if you haven't really dealt with this guy, obviously he's, uh, he's going to be taking up quite a bit of the room and your camera angle. But... It's actually fairly easy to deal with this guy as long as you know his attacks, which are either going to be him slamming his head down, him kind of side swiping with his neck. He'll have a little bit of an explosion attack by the time you get him to half health. He'll swing his tail. He'll have his hands together, and then you'll just want to roll towards him in those moments. But any of those attacks, I mean, it's, it's actually uh, 
quite ridiculous how easy it is sometimes to avoid those guys' attacks. But we'll get a golden seed out of him and another one of those bell bearings. And we'll also be getting a death root from this. Now from that point, we'll need to promptly exit, and that'll be this dungeon completed. Now heading across this entire walkway, oh, before we do that, I believe there was one more item we needed to pick up at the top of here. Actually, nope, we don't have anything up there. Just a bit of more of the crafting material, but we'll start heading along this uh, walkway. Now on the other side of this, we've got another one of those uh, iron giant guys with a bow, so do be aware of that, but on our left side is going to be that lost ash of war. We'll need to grab that up. Now up ahead, bleh, up ahead here on our left, you'll notice there's a little bit of a path right there. There's a golden rune over there, but you'll need to, or you'll want to take this uh, iron giant out before you actually go back for that. I don't showcase that footage on here because I didn't have it properly lined up. I got it on a later run when I was kind of double back and bo double Whew. losing my uh, train of thought here, but doubling back and checking for things that I may have missed. But from that Iron Giant, we'll also get a Golem Great Bow. And over there on the left was going to be another one of those golden runes. But you can just run back across that bridge and grab that up at your leisure. But up ahead, we'll also have another Scarab that's going to give us another one of those somber smithing stones. From that point, you know, I'll be doing a, a little bit more of that traversing the landscape, just looking for any more secrets, but... Not a whole lot before we get to the main area itself, but from this point we'll need to head up on top of that down pillar in order to push upwards. Over on our right is going to be a bit more of that, uh, I believe that's crafting material, but could be wrong. And over on our left we're going to grab up our first Lost Grace, for this area at least. Now from that point we'll be essentially bit of just open area here, a few enemies sporadically here and there. You'd think there'd be a bit more loot on some of these spots that you can jump up to, but it's just more of scenery. Kind of bummed about that. A lot of this area, there's some good loot to be found in this area, but it's kind of spaced out in this larger area. A bit more, uh, or it just feels like there's a bit less loot, even though there's some higher tier loot out here. Now you don't have to take these guys out. I was just checking just to see it or make sure that there was anything for it, but you could easily just run by these guys. No worries at all. If you want some extra runes, by all means, take them down. But they're not going to be dropping anything special. It's just going to be adding to those runes and another one of those enemy types that you can easily just run by and it's going to be no worries. But from this point, we'll be heading over to the right, or over to the left, as soon as we come down to this fork in the road. There'll be a couple of those uh, monkey enemies over here, and a couple of bats that feel stronger than the ones in the previous areas. Ended up taking three swings, which is whereas before the red main area and pretty much everywhere prior to the capital city, I was pretty much one-shotting these bats, but now they seem to have some beefier health to them. But from that point, we'll be able to head over to the right after we've taken out all these enemies. There's a couple of items that we can grab up over here, and I believe that one was going to be another one of those consumables. Then over on our right, we're going to have a shack over here that's going to have some type of, I, I believe, sorcerer-type armor. It's just going to benefit you for uh, having that focus and... I forgot to check it, so you'll have to check that for yourself, see if it's anything that boosts your stats, but could be beneficial for those sorcerers. But as soon as we jump up from that wind tunnel, we'll head over to the right. There's going to be a vendor over here. Can't remember if he had a cookbook, but he also has some of those uh, stone sword keys. I just buy them up in bulk every, every time that I see them. We will also have a cookbook. I believe there may be some arrows here that could be worthwhile. You know, rune arcs if you really want to complete or use that uh, activated great rune. Me personally, I always forget about my uh, great rune. Never use it, honestly. Uh, maybe I'm making the game harder on myself, but I, I just have not felt the uh, necessity to actually use it. But from that point, we'll head back over to the left. We'll have a little bit of some runes over here, or ruins. Not runes, per se. 
there'll be a few more of those bats lingering around here. And a couple of butterflies here and there. But like I said before, it's there's some high tier loot out here, but there's not a whole lot that's kind of sporadically laid out in some of these areas that are a bit bigger. There's pretty much like one or two things here and there, and then one high tier item to grab up. Got a consumable over there on the right. But from this point, this is going to be one of those uh, interesting dungeons that we'll need to open, or smaller dungeon in a way, or lair. Not sure whether or not that's the right terminology for it. But there'll be a jellyfish outside. Don't attack this jellyfish. There'll be some type of what sounds like a little girl speaking almost like she's dead, waiting on someone else. What you'll need to do is summon up another jellyfish. thought this was uh, ridiculous, but as soon as you summon that jellyfish, they, uh, they just fly off away together, and we open up the doorway down below to this lair, smaller dungeon-type area. And we'll have a uh, item to grab up down here, which I believe is a talisman. Once we get in, we'll have the, uh, I believe, primal glenstone uh, blade, which is going to make our spells cost less of our FP, but decrease our maximum health. Doesn't sound like a bad trade-off for uh, any of those sorcerers out there. Now, over on this bridge on the right, not sure whether or not this was something that happens at night or not, but... You go over and talk to this ghost sitting in this chair and we'll be getting a helmet from this guy that's going to be pretty good for some of those sorcerers out there. Increases our intellect and our faith by a couple of points. Could be beneficial to some of those caster types out there. After I constantly look that over. But once we get to this area, we're going to have more than a few of these astral projection uh, or summoned giant skeletons. They're not too hard to deal with, but when it comes to their ranged attack, it can be quite devastating, so you kind of want to avoid that. And I'll tell you right now, I wasted my time just killing a few of these. Now, we will still getting be getting some runes from these guys, but you do not need to do that. You pretty much just need to run straight on by them. I just kept going for them, just kind of looking around. Couldn't find the main boss, but we'll get to that guy here in a bit later on in the video. Now, there'll be that gold rune over on our right. But from this point, we'll start pretty much doubling back after I've taken this guy down. You know, I took way too much time on just taking these guys down. Kind of surprised they didn't hit me every time. It just felt like they just phased on through me. But from this point, we'll start heading back towards the bridge that we just came from. And, you know, I probably could have edited this down a bit, but wanted to make sure everybody was on the same page. Knew where I was going. No giant cuts that kind of left you hanging where... You didn't know where I was, didn't know how to follow. But obviously, we'll, we'll take this guy down. That's going to be another item to loot right there. Goodness, man, I'm telling you. Grab up another one of those uh, runes right there. Over on our left, we're going to be facing off with one of these uh, dead chickens, or undead chickens, if you will. That's one chicken you don't want to fry up and eat. That's the dark meat that nobody enjoys, because that's just deadly. But this one's got a strong peck to it. You do want to watch out for that. It's got more than a few magical abilities, and you want to avoid those strikes at all costs, because it's got some devastating damage to it now. I did die to it one time where it just somehow like exploded with some of this dark magic outward. It was almost an instant kill, so do watch out if he does get to some moment where he feels like he's about to explode. But from that, we'll get another one of those weapons. And then, forget which way I went from here. We'll double back over here. I believe that was a spear that we grabbed off that uh, dead chicken. Like I said before, you do want to avoid their range attacks from those giant skeletons. can be quite devastating. But from this point, we'll start heading towards the castle. So over here on the right, I believe, is another forget the name of that item but from that point we'll start heading over to the right over here towards castle soul there's going to be some lightning strikes to avoid that can be devastating when it comes to the damage but just in front of castle soul we'll be able to grab up one of those lost graces and then start heading in now as soon as we do walk in there's going to be two lions we'll have to face off with lucky enough if you do head over to the right goodness my editing skills i forgot to drop this out of here 
Luckily, luckily that was not taking too long. But you'll notice we've got the two lions. If we push over to the right, we're going to have one lion that's, for whatever reason, already at half health. Not sure what that is all about, but as soon as we do take that one down, we'll be getting another one of those somber smithing stones. And we'll want to take out the other lion just to get another one of those somber smithing stones. Now this one will be spitting out some of that uh, frost breath, so be aware of that. Can be quite frustrating to deal with. The frostbite in this area can be quite punishing. But again, over to our right. Going to have another one of those gold runes. From this point, we'll start heading over to the left towards these fortifications. And on our right, or on our left, we'll have a ladder that we need to get up and another one of those butterflies. Now from this point, we'll head over to the right. Have a couple of enemies that are the astral projection type. You do want to watch out for them. Oh, almost forgot. We'll also have some explosive uh, crossbow fortifications over here. Basilisks. Basilisks. Can't remember the name for it, but there'll be another smithing stone just before we head down that ladder and a nice little painting to collect. Which actually, that painting might be the reason that ghost guy shows up on that bridge. So if that is the case, now that I look back at that, that may be how you activate that guy. So be aware of that. Maybe check that if the guy isn't there the first time you go across, go back after you collect that painting. But from that point, we'll start heading over here to the doorway. Inside here, not going to be much. Checked for illusionary walls pretty much all over this place. Couldn't find one. But in this next area, we're going to have more than a few enemies to deal with. A couple of knights. But like I said before, M and Jack, appreciate that follow. But there will also be that knight and the ash rejection type, so they'll start portaling around. Can be quite frustrating, especially when they're pretty much one shot, and then next thing you know, they disappear, reappear, get you with one of those attacks, not able to hit them in that transition moment or animation moment. But we'll have another one of those knights as well to deal with. Ooh, I hate knights in this game, and especially these type. When they can just start teleporting all over the place, and they've got that frost ability, just trying to push you out, stag you. Hit you with a couple more damage, but lucky enough, we've got more than enough damage to stagger him back. Now, up at the top here, we're also going to have a few more enemies. Now, you will want to uh, also grab up some of those consumables. You could just arguably go in through that doorway, and on our left would be the Lost Grace, but at the same time, we could just go back around it. We've got a smithing stone over there on the right. Over here on the right is going to be a gold rune. We won't cross this bridge just yet. We'll double back, try to grab up that Lost Grace. That way we do not have to deal with uh, walking all the way from the front gate again, especially with all the enemies we've already had to go through. But inside this little church area, we'll have another one of those legendary weapons right here, which is going to be a cursed... Cursed something. I, I, can't, I can't read it from here. A cursed sword. Might be nice for some of those holy weapon uh, dealers. For whatever reason, you can't open those two doors just beyond it. I guess that's to protect you from any enemies outside, possibly. Maybe that's the case for that Lost Grace. I believe that's why they did it, but it is kind of frustrating. We can't make it through there. Now up here is going to be two wolves, and we'll have that knight right there. I believe, yeah, it is a knight. Very frustrating with those spearmen, or halibirds. Luckily... We'll be able to make quick work of it. Maybe that might not be the case for you. Those dogs can be very punishing. Hopefully you'll be making it as smoothly as I did. But over here on the left, we'll have another one of those stone sword keys. Now, after we've pretty much destroyed everything just around us, we'll head back straight to where that uh, Lost Grace area was, just behind that church itself. There's going to be a doorway on our left now. In this uh, next room here, there's going to be a couple of biters down below us grabber type guys and then up above we're going to have more than a few enemies and we're going to have to deal with two different knights as well one of them is going to be a dual wield and the other one's going to be another one of those sword and shield types so be ready for that but the common enemies should be fairly easy to take down but they still will be that astral projection <coughs> astral projection type we'll have a smithing stone over there on the left one of those chained up guys now the dual wield knights are uh, pretty easy to deal with I suppose just because they're not able to block with that shield. Not not able to avoid that massive damage. Whereas these knights, every single time, 
Seems like my blade wants to hit nothing but that shield. But should be able to make quick work of it. For whatever reason, I couldn't grab that loot from that guy. But over on our right is going to be our boss fight for this area. Or this castle, essentially. We'll want to grab that lift up just in case. Really not necessary. It's not going to help us out. We won't need to go down it later. But as soon as we get into this fight, I would suggest having a summons out. Because this boss is going to summon in two knights. I'd go for the dual wield knight first. You really do want to take these knights out first before going in with the boss. Get your uh, summons to aggro the main boss, you know, if you can, because as you'll notice, my summons, that clone is uh, taking quite a minute to actually take on the aggro. But once he does, we'll be able to take, or take on those knights, make sure that we uh, just get quick work of them, even though in this fight, uh, seems like I had a harder time with this knight than I did the boss himself. But like I said before in a previous video, don't make these boss fights any harder than they need to be. Anybody that's telling you, oh, you know, you, you didn't actually beat the boss if you used a summons, you know, just tell them to keep eating those bowls of razor blades, man. It's just not worth it. You know, you want to have fun with this. You don't want to just put too much aggro on yourself. Otherwise, you're breaking the controller. You're breaking everything in your life. You know, you're just mad at everything. And there's no reason for all that. We, we've got enough to deal with in Elden Ring than uh, making life even harder on ourselves with this. But after we take down that knight, we'll be able to focus in on the boss. The boss is going to have an electric type ability or electric type, ugh, electric type abilities about midway through his health bar. Before that, he's going to be doing that frostbite ability, very uh, unique to this area. But it'll be in that 360 radius, fairly easy to dodge most of his attacks if he does get aggroed on you. You'll notice he's pretty slow with those slings, and then he'll have a, a right armed hook type of uh, just fist weapon that's going to be the electric type but for the most part if you've got that summons he's going to be aggroed on him pretty much indefinitely you'll be able to just keep tagging him from the back slowly dwindling down that health until just here in a few seconds we'll be done and done with him I feel like the knight was uh, a bit more aggro than this guy but once we take him down, we will get that fist weapon that he had in his right hand that's going to be in a lightning type ability. Would be interesting for a dual wield type of build to have that star over there in the left hand, right hook. Might be trying that out later on. But for the time being, we're using that Bloodhound Fang until we finish that first playthrough. That's going to be the main weapon. But over here on the right is going to be a lift that takes us up to get our next uh, legendary type of item which is actually going to be the other half of a, a medallion that is going to give us access to the next area. Now I'll show you how to do that uh, or where to use that at the very end of the video after we've cleared the rest of the mountaintop of the giants. But after talking to that ghost, we'll promptly head back down now. I chose a different route going down. I'd highly suggest just going with the lift, but lucky enough, if you do jump over here, it could have been just a fat suit. I probably couldn't have made it maybe if I uh, got naked I could have made that jump but lucky enough if you do do this you will be able to jump down without taking any damage or at least dying that's going to be the main focus right there but from this point we'll start heading back pretty much from the way that we came definitely don't jump over the edge now over here on our right, or as soon as we come down through this staircase, we'll be immediately taking a left out of this doorway, going up this ladder over here. There's a few more things that we need to grab up before heading forward. Now, a couple of enemies over here, a couple of archers. Over on our left is going to be a little wooden plank area. We'll drop down from this ladder. There'll be one more knight to deal with. Luckily, he is the uh, dual wield type, so fairly easy to take him down. Gets staggered quite easily. And over here on our right is going to be a medallion that's going to greatly increase our FP or mana in general. We'll head back up the ladder, go over to the left, and then we'll drop onto this rooftop in front of us. Should be one enemy type over here. I guess he's died or he's run down here. There's going to be more than a few rats down here, so be aware of that. Almost took me down, but we'll have another one of those smithing stones over on the right. A couple more rats to deal with from this point we'll be able to head on out after we grab that rune arc. I believe that was the last little bit, and then we'll be heading out to the front after I've done a few more rolls. 
well, for whatever reason, I have teabagged that platform, but all right. Now, from this point, we'll need to head over to the right and head behind the building itself or the castle itself. Now, we'll only be able to get behind here from the left side, not the right side. From the right side, we'll still have a piece of loot to grab, but we'll be able to drop down on that side. But over here on the left, as you'll notice, uh, as we just walked by, there's going to be a graveyard filled with some more of those uh, gold runes. So we'll want to grab those up, make sure that we uh, have as many of those runes as possible at this point. You know, more than likely, they're not going to be enough to give you that next level up, but they could be that small amount just to give you that next uh, level up anyways. Or just enough to buy something out of that next vendor you find, just in case you've possibly been dying more than a few times and didn't have all the runes collected for that moment. Now over here on our right, after we've taken out that bird, those pesky birds in this area, frustrating. The hitbox on them. Almost feels like I never get the angle on horseback. But luckily, they're one shot. Now we'll have one more piece of loot. We'll have to get off the horse for this one. I tried getting as close as possible, but couldn't quite uh, get the angle apparently. But we'll have another somber smithing stone right there. From this point, we'll be dropping down. Now in this gameplay footage, I came back after I'd already taken down the uh, turtle church bell thing. If you want to take this down, you know, you just need to hit those... Uh, Skulls that are pretty much compacted on the uh, sides of it, I guess from how many people he's been stepping on throughout his little lifetime. But fairly simple, and this is just going to be the way that we duplicate some of those uh, remembrances. If you needed more of the items, possibly needed to get one more item from that uh, blind woman back at the round table. But we'll just open up the doorways, then we'll promptly be heading right on back out. Now from this point, we'll be going along the right side and heading back up towards that graveyard filled with those uh, giant skeletons. Essentially, what we're going to do is just kind of race on straight through it, just avoid all of those giant skeletons as much as possible. It's really not much loot out here, which is kind of surprising to me. I did uh, comb over this area, and again, it was another one of those moments where, you know, there's some solid loot out here, but it does feel a little bit dry. But just in front of us, over to the right next to this bridge, is going to be this uh, next Lost Graze for us. Now from this point, we'll double back a little bit and head over to our left, which is going to be this uh, bridge over here, which we'll need to cross in order to get to this minor Ur tree over here. After you deal with a few of those uh, snakes and skeleton, or snake and skulls. Now we'll promptly head along the left edge. If you don't get close to the tree, the uh, Ur tree champion won't spawn just yet. We'll be doubling back to take him down. It'll be a little bit different this time around though. But another one of those moments where you're just kind of like, there's it's just not as much loot as there has been in previous areas. But just down here, we're going to have another one of those gold runes. Have a little look-see if there's anything down below, but trust me, you don't want to make that jump. Not worth it. But from this point, I believe we're not going to be able to grab or jump all the way up on top of there, sadly enough. But we'll kind of walk around the left edge, and just around the tree, we'll have that Ur Tree Champion come out. Now, this guy is pretty devastating, I will state that. He does knock me out pretty much instantly as soon as I walk by him. Pretty much uh, close to one-shot ability right there, but we come back for our revenge. Now, this guy's got a special trick up his sleeve in that... As soon as you get him to about half health, he'll duplicate himself. So there'll be two of them, but they share the same health bar. So it's a bit irritating to deal with two of them, but at the same time, all you have to do is either one of you, either one of them that you hit is going to further decrease both of their health bars. So lucky enough, as soon as we finally get that health bar depleted, they're both going to die at the same time. We'll get a couple more of those uh, crystal tears out of this, or that, uh, I forget the flask's name, but further increasing our uh, abilities that we can stack up with those uh, crystal tiers. Now from that point, we'll double back to that bridge that we just came past. Over on our right, there's going to be a somber smithing stone on the guy sitting in the middle. I want to grab that up. Now we're essentially going to be making a giant circle right here. We're just next to the area with those, uh, or with that jellyfish uh, dungeon or lair. Kind of did a, another once-over just to see if there's anything I was missing, but again, 
just one of those moments where it just feels a bit dry on the loot, even though the loot is of that top tier. Now, back to this graveyard where we're uh, facing off with all these giant skeletons. If we keep going along that right edge and then we push over to the left, we'll actually find the, the boss that's kind of spawning all these guys. Maybe you've seen this guy before. He's the kind of graveyard swimming guy. He's got the boat. He'll be over here on the left side of this area. And as soon as we take him down, we'll also get another weapon and a death root out of this guy. I believe it was a type of greatsword. Fairly easy to take him down. You know, he's just uh, he's almost like a fish out of water in that moment. That's going to be the great sword that we'll be picking up, giving us a little bit magic damage with that. We'll need a bit of intellect in order to use that one as well. From this point, we'll start heading back towards uh, the Lost Graves that we picked up not too long ago. You know, doing another once over in this graveyard, just seeing if there's any items that I may have missed. Just... Unbelievable how dry this area is. I feel like there should be some more gold runes, consumable, something. And I just... Feels a bit lack lackluster in a way. Now, from that Lost Graze Point, we'll be heading straight north from it, I believe. If I'm correct. Maybe east, I believe. Just along this right edge right here. Now, over here on the left, it's going to be more than a few skeletons in this area. But again, another one of those moments where it just kind of feels a little bit dry when it comes to loot. Surprising that there's nothing just sitting around on some of these tombstones. Just a bunch of dead ends. But from this point, we'll start heading down this slope towards this uh, frozen lake area. And then we'll be taking a right down towards the path that we didn't take when we first came in. This is essentially the right that we would have taken before we taken that left in order to get up to that wind tunnel. But over here on the left is actually going to be one of those statues. We'll need to hit this guy over here and kite him over to break this statue for us. Now we will be taking a bit of damage for this, so you know, do be sure to have a little bit of extra health on hand. I clearly didn't uh, even look at my health bar in that moment, but we'll be getting another smithing stone out of this. Now, you can't take this guy out, but again, it's just going to be another one of those moments where you're just going to get some runes out of it. Can be a bit aggro to deal with, and there's only one one more item that we need to pick up over down here. And that's going to be a golden seed. After I take this guy down, then promptly push out, and over to our left is behind that uh, iron giant over there is going to be our golden seed. <clears throat> Now from this point, we'll need to head back on top to that Lost Graze that we just picked up up there on the top next to that bridge. But from this point, we'll head back to the right, going towards where that drop-off is for that uh, frozen lake. And just right here on this pillar with these two skeletons, we'll jump up on top here and there's going to be an invisible bridge over here. It was quite an interesting one right here, but I slowed it down right here. As you'll notice, we'll need to kind of go up a ramp. You'll notice it has like this blue streak on it. That's going to be the area. You know, I'm, I'm tiptoeing right here because I don't know where the edge of it is. You can clearly see some of those uh, blood stains from people just falling over the edge. But as long as you follow that little uh, blue tint right there, you'll make it all the way up. Now in here, there'll be a couple more of those flying monkeys to deal with. So be aware of that. They've got those whirly blades. Pull out that lantern, be able to head up over the left, we'll head up this lift, and we'll actually get a legendary spell at the top of this tower. I believe, I can't remember what it was, it's some type of raining ability. We'll also have an enemy up the top, so do be aware of that. But it's going to be some type of rain ability. Looks like it could be useful, but from this point, we'll be heading back to the great grand lift of rolled. This is where we're going to be using that medallion in order to get to the next area. And as soon as you get to the lift, make sure to hit left or right on your D-pad in order to use the right medallion. Because as you'll remember, we'll have used a different medallion for this same lift to get to that mountaintop of the giants. So we'll need to shift it over to the green medallion. That's going to be for the Halig tree, I believe it was. But that's going to be the mountaintop of the giants guide right there, guys. That's pretty much everything from that area if I missed anything I mean honestly it's more than likely possibly a gold rune sitting next to a tombstone that just didn't catch my eye with all that snow everywhere but 
just after that, I will be doing a guide on this next area with the Halig tree area. I forget the name of it. It's just over to the left of the uh, mountaintop of the Giants. And we'll have two other different areas that are going to be some higher level areas. Very irritating to deal with. I'll have guides on those coming out this weekend as well. One of them being with, uh, if you've uh, heard about it, Mel Melania. One of those uh, hardest bosses in the games that people are talking about. And I'll tell you right now, it is, it's a nightmare. But we'll have that guide coming up. I'll, tell, I'll give you the tips on how to take that one down. But I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like to see some of this content live, hit that link down in the description. Description. Follow me over at Twitch. And if you'd like to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. Going to be doing a lot more of these guides coming in the future. And on that note, hope you learned something. Hope it helped you out. And have a good one.